Whenever I look at crypto projects, I'm always looking at what problem are they solving. And one of the biggest problems out there is problems with hacks, problems with coding breaking down, and problems with bad actors trying to hack data. There's a company called Trios that is working to solve this whole problem by being an underlying layer that sits under all tech uh, and checks the coding for bad players, for bad coding that goes out there, recording it all, and then sending the data out from there. We're gonna talk about Trios and what they're planning to do, how they're planning to do it, and uh, why they could be a big game changer in the system. So if you're interested in hearing about that, uh, please uh, click that like button. Feel free to subscribe and click that bell notification. We'll let you know when we've got other videos coming out. And do need to let you know that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Uh, so please do your own due diligence before jumping into any projects. Just here to uh, let you know about projects so you can do some more research on them yourself. So, uh, if you think about all devices that are out there, PCs, uh, smartphones, Internet of Things devices, smart cars, uh, all the information with shipping and receiving, manufacturing, there's all this data out there, advertising, and it all works on code. And the code has to work without being hacked. And who's to know if there is a problem with the code? Well, what Trios is doing is they're going to be checking all this code as an underlying layer and then sending that uh, code forward. So we're going to get into just how they're doing that. Um, imagine if they're creating a trustworthy platform that looks at all this uh, machine, all the machines and all the code that's running and makes sure that it's programmed to do that it's actually doing what it is programmed to do and then recording all that data and like i said sending it where it needs to be delivered so they're working as um, a layer negative one network so if you think of the internet being layer zero and then you've got uh, layer one crypto projects that are built on top of that like bitcoin ethereum cardano solana avax uh, anybody that's built their own code and uh, has uh, crypto projects running on top of that. Then there's layer twos that run using that, uh, using that code, like Ethereum has a polygon running on top of that that is a, a sharded network that allows transactions to run faster on their network, even though it's using the underlying uh, Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so with their layer negative one solution, they're saying they're going to be checking all the coding underneath these other layers and they're building protocols on top that will allow uh, all these chains to work together on top of their network. And uh, it's going to be fast at uh, 100,000 transactions per second, where uh, Visa, I believe, is around 26,000 transactions per second. Uh, Bitcoin uh, at about 10 transactions per second. So 100,000 transactions per second, we're talking pretty, pretty fast. Um, and they do have uh, private and both public options available. So it's going to be used for uh, both public spaces and uh, private as well. Uh, if we look at their vision, uh, it's to solve this trust issue with Trios. They can uh, root trust into machines with assurance that the machines will do what they're told to do, they're saying. Dr. Anbang Ruan is the founder of Trios. Uh, he got his PhD uh, in uh, computer security from Oxford, uh, University of Oxford. And uh, he's had 12 years of experience in cloud security and cryptography. So he's, he's uh, no newcomer to this uh, world. Uh, there are over 70 uh, team members, 50 engineers, 20 uh, PhD and master graduates uh, that uh, they have working in the system. They've got three research and development centers and uh, 40 patents that are pending right now. Uh, there's not a lot of information on the uh, team itself, but I did jump on LinkedIn. Uh, they do have 12 people listed on LinkedIn uh, in here with uh, Anbang Ruan. Uh, showing that uh, he is the founder and CEO uh, from 2018 uh, to present. 
they did uh, attend Peking University from 2007 to 2010, and then uh, University of Oxford from 2010 to 2015, where he got his PhD in uh, computer science there. So TRIAS stands for Trustworthy and Reliable Intelligent Autonomous System, uh, and it's got three separate uh, sections that actually make up the, the core of TRIAS. Uh, Leviathan, Prometh, and Magcarta. Uh, we'll go into those individually. So we'll start with Leviathan, and it uh, focuses on creating this trust uh, relationship among different nodes. So it determines um, what nodes are trustworthy. Um, basically, its main goal is to identify a set of nodes who possess the greatest difficulties to what they're saying is tell a lie, um, which basically is the difficulties to ex uh, execute unexpected programs without being identified. So if a node doesn't catch uh, some bad programming uh, within the code, uh, it's going to be seen as uh, less uh having less integrity than other nodes that are out there. Uh, so the system's always determining uh, what nodes have the most integrity, uh, and that's how their system will, will run uh, more quickly. Um, it runs on HC graph is what it's called, and here's a, a picture of their HC graph. Um, but it's to enforce mutual um, protocols among the nodes. Um, so that they collaboratively construct this web of trust. Uh, it says by tracing the connections and evaluating the strength values, a node is able to deduce the integrity of another. So it's it's just they're they're constantly gossiping with each other and looking at each other to determine uh, who the best uh, node is at uh, finding bad coding within the system itself. Then Prometh is the second uh, section of a trios. And uh, this is determining whether the software implements correct behaviors, whether the software's uh, behaviors are correctly enforced. So once again, looking, f this is the system actually looking for the bad coding, looking at faulty behaviors embedded in the software. So looking for, for anything that is in the coding that shouldn't be there. So we have this graph that's uh, showing the code is coming in, the data gets recorded and uh, saved on the ledger itself. Uh, it goes through uh, several different iterations that are uh, tracking or, or determining different parts of the code and recording that data uh, on each step. So, uh, so whatever coding the, the system is looking at, it uh, records that source code data uh, and then uh, it gets that information passed to another section uh, where it tests the binaries, etc. It's uh, analyzing the security uh, and goes through multiple steps to determine how secure uh, and how uh, complete that code is. And then it's recording if there's any errors or, or any issues that, that look like it's coming up with the coding itself. And that brings us to Mag Carta. And Mag Carta is their smart contract uh, language that they're using itself. If we look at their uh, complete mainnet structure, um, they actually, uh, a TRIOS mainnet is made up of seven eco projects in the TRIOS ecosystem. And each of uh, the project has its own value proposition, its technical architecture, token, uh, token economy, and ecosystem. So uh, even though each of these seven sections is its own uh, entity, uh, it all ties back to the uh, TRIOS mainnet and is part of that uh, TRIOS mainnet. Uh, so as individual projects, they each have their own main nets. They're made up of their own nodes. Um, but like I said, they're all tied into part of the, uh, the TRIOS main net itself. Uh, so if you take uh, triathlon, as, uh, triathlon is uh, one of these seven layers. Uh, it has multiple functions, including public chain tests, smart contract test, and initial test net offering. So where a lot of the testing happens. And then we've got uh, uh, Tusima. It's a high performance Ethereum compatible uh, public uh, chain. So this is where Tosima would uh, run uh, on the chain and allow Ethereum to work on the chain itself. Then there are other layers that will allow 
other uh, blockchains to work on the system so that actually you'd be able to uh, exchange ETH directly for Cardano or Cardano uh, directly for Solana or Solana directly for AVAX. So you don't need to go to an exchange, whether that's decentralized or a centralized exchange, uh, but you can change uh, tokens directly one for the other. Uh, then we can get into more recent things. They do keep on top of uh, their articles, so you can uh, follow their along on Medium. Uh, this is uh, just from 11 uh, 27 22. And uh, Trios will participate in the Japanese stablecoin offering. Uh, it says that they uh, have jointly been granted uh, the license to issue stable coins. Uh, they're qualified to do the offering. They still need to examine carefully at what stage to uh, SEMA uh, will satisfy various uh, technical criteria. Uh, and they've also uh, previously mentioned partnerships with other Japanese companies, uh, and they'll be working with them mainly on STO and token-based uh, supply chain finance, uh, which will be uh, other applications on the Tusima network in addition to uh, stable coins. Uh, and STO is stable coin token offerings. Uh, so they are continuing to work on a lot of things. Uh, and they, they do weekly uh, reports. Uh, this is from December 5th, just uh, yesterday from when I'm uh, making this video. And they talk about, uh, you know, all the, the technical updates that they've uh, been working on, community updates uh, that they've done and uh, milestones they've made, etc. So uh, you can continually keep up with uh, what's going on uh, with uh, Trios just by following along on their Medium articles and getting notifications on when those come out. So if we look at the uh, chart for the set to the max, uh, the charting actually started February of 2021. Uh, it jumped up to that high of uh, 3170. Uh, we're currently down 94% with this crazy bear market we're in. Um, it didn't reach a new peak uh, in November, but it was uh, close to that uh, previous peak. And if we look at where we've uh, currently been, uh, the interesting thing is we hit a low uh, around October 20th, around 80 cents or so. Uh, it was spiking up and then we had the FTX collapse, but it did not collapse all the way back to where it was in October. Uh, so, uh, and we're just about back to uh, that high that we reached uh, as the market was climbing right before we had FTX collapse. So that uh, that's, uh, to me is more bullish. Uh, as you know, most coins crashed below where they had been sitting before. So I'm going to keep an eye on Trios. And if you found this information valuable, hey, click that like button. It really helps the channel. And feel free to subscribe. And we'll let you know when we've got other videos coming up. So thank you for your time. Peace, love, and we'll see you in the next one.